be present but it is very important uh, that is the reason that part is added in the practical now we are uh, seeing the ohtc in the ohtc it is a overall heat transfer coefficient we know that these are all the things which are having we are using a simple uh, heat exchanger or heat interchanger in our pharmacy the uh, the simple heat exchanger or heat interchanger which we are using in our pharmacy in the case of heat transfer it is a just a, a revision of what we have already done in the theory is that if you see it is a simple uh, round bottom flask with condenser and the receiver so in this particular case your uh, condenser is the one which is uh, the heat transfer uh, taking place most of the times where uh, heat exchange is taking place from the steam which is present within the condenser and going out uh, to the cold water circulated in the condenser so heat is getting transferred from the one medium to another medium that is the reason we are calling it as a not interchanger it is called as a exchanger okay if you see here our operator is same and the liquid in the still is same round bottom flask and condenser receiver is the same you can make a simple modification in the procedure one is you can have the cold water which is rotated in the counter current or parallel you see here always the steam is generated when you are heating your liquid in the round bottom flask it will be generated and entering into the condenser from left to right side from left to right side so this is fixed we we can't change we cannot allow the steam to go from uh, receiver side to still side it won't go it will not be happening like that because steam is generated in the distillation flask in the left side it will always travel towards the right so that direction is fixed now if you want to make your counter current flow we can connect our cold water in the reversal manner on uh, you will be collecting in the right side of your inlet and allowing the water to go in the opposite direction of a steam and it will exit outlet cold water in the right side uh, in the left side so entry of the cold water is in the right side entry of the steam is in the left side that is the reason it is called as a counter current so this is uh, one which we are having a red arrow marks are which are present steam is going in the case of right direction left to right and cold water is going in the direction of right to left so counter current flow is present there is another type of flow which you can attach in this heat exchanger is parallel flow in the parallel flow what will happen you can uh, make this uh, uh, connection of cold water and uh, allowing cold water from the left to right again so both steam and cold water are moving in the same direction that is called as a parallel so the experimental setup is containing two types of uh, directions counter current and parallel this is one parameter in this particular heat exchanger it makes a lot of difference and power savings and which we are going to have a uh, lot of revenue generation also this is one part the second part is if you see the in the heat exchanger you are having a heat transfer from the steam to the condenser part so from the condenser also heat will be lost if it is not properly insulated if you are using insulated condenser your way of heat transfer is different and uh, if you are using any uh, uninsulated condenser your heat transfer will be different because some of the heat dissipated from the condenser so the heat dissipation from the condenser it making a difference uh, because of that you will be having a heat transfer uh, variation the overall heat transfer is also getting varied insulated condenser and uninsulated condenser so we are using a plant material of construction we know that the cotton is a poorest conductor whereas the copper is a rich conductor of heat so if you wrap your condenser with a cotton thread and it will act as a condensing uh, insulatory effect so your uh, uh, heat exchange will be different overall heat transfer deficient is different this is another parameter so we are going to use these uh, two parameters as an variation and we can run the equipment and we you, we take uh, some volume of uh, liquid in the distillation flask collect some volume in the receiver 
so we are going to collect the outlet inlet liquid uh, we are going to keep it, uh, keep it cold water in the tap connection outlet we are going to collect in a bottle or a bin where we are going to collect entire water and see how much is the uh, volume we are going to uh, consume to get uh, the received material that is the distillate some value so this is actually what the mass of circulating water the mass of the steam that is actually liquid condensate which is uh, we have got it so this we are going to see it. another one is the temperature temperature we can measure the what is the entry of the steam what is it having a temperature what is the temperature of receiver which you have got a distillation liquid what is the temperature of inlet water whether it is a counter current or parallel what is its temperature initially after getting heat what is the outlet water temperature because generally it will rise so steam temperature is less distillate temperature or condensate temperature is low inlet water temperature is less and outlet temperature is more so we have got a different delta t now so this delta t are change in the temperatures are different now so we need to collectively take the change in the difference delta t to put our heat transfer so for that purpose we are having a calculation overall heat transfer coefficient u can be calculated by the using this formula i hope uh, you have seen uh, in the theory uh, part when we are discussing it this is given by the q total quantity of heat transfer divided by the delta t into a r total quantity of heat transfer can be given uh, given by the u into delta t into a so u is the overall heat transfer coefficient delta t is the change in the temperature and a is the area of the heat exchanger or heat exchanger okay now what is the a area of the heat exchanger exchanger we can calculate because this condenser is cylindrical in nature we note down the radius of diameter of the condenser internal surface and uh, we note down the length of the condenser by using the formula 2 pi r h r is the radius h is the length you can calculate the area a you, you know it total quantity of the heat transferred you can be calculated by using the mass of the water what uh, we have collected and s is the specific heat and uh, temperature loss or ga gain that is actually what we are going to take as a total quantity of the heat in this particular case temperature gain will be taking place in the case of condenser and the temperature loss is taking place in the case of receiver so steam is getting lost too, and uh, it is uh, having a low temperature in the receiver whereas the inlet water is getting a gain and uh, more heat is present in the outlet water so either you can calculate a gain in the condenser that it is exchanger or loss in the steam both are you can take the average this is actually what we are going to have in our practical session so this can be calculated by the mst so this q can be divided into the two types one is q1 plus q2 q1 is the temperature gain how much is the temperature is gained by the uh, circulated water q2 is the temperature lost by the steam and uh, converting into condensate both the temperature you q uh, quantity of heat you take it and take the average then you will get a q so the q is known a is known and we need to calculate delta t so the delta t can be calculated for the parallel by using this particular formula if you see here this diagram is giving a representation of your condenser so in the condenser if you see here the distance uh, from the cold water uh, inlet in the condenser t1 small t1 what you are seeing in the bottom <clears throat> is starting point of your cold water it is uh, proceeding in one side of con condenser so in the parallel connection the steam and the cold water is going in the same directions same directions so t1 is the starting point of your cold water and t2 is the ending point outlet of your cold water the top curve is we are having a steam that is a capital t t1 and it is going to have a capital t2 that is condensate so these two temperatures we are going to put and draw and both are present in the parallel manner we have given the connection when you have given the parallel connection and we are going to have a difference between the small delta t1 and capital delta t1 that will give a small de uh, delta t1 and uh, small t2 and big capital t2 you will have a small delta t2 so these differences of uh, delta small t1 and uh, delta small t2 we are going to use calculate delta t 
that is the equation which is present delta t1 minus delta t2 divided by natural log of delta t1 divided by delta t2 this is actually what uh, this uh, uh, equation which is uh, present for the calculation of a delta t for the parallel <coughs> it is the one which we are also going to do it uh, in our uh, practice and i will show you once in the in the similar manner counter current in the counter current if you see the cold water is going from the right side to left it is rising and uh, it is going to have from the left side to right side whereas the steam is going from the left side to right side so the cold water is entering from the right to left steam is entering from the left to right so it is counter current in this case also we are getting delta small t1 delta small t2 the difference between the small t1 and uh, capital t1 and uh, small t2 and capital t2 and put average so in this particular case we are not going to use a natural log we are going to take average of these two differences and calculate the delta t so now we know the delta t now we know the a and we are able to know the q and you can calculate u this is a simple